new platform so that it can become of use to us and really be benefit the proclamation of the gospel. At this point, uh, formally, we'd like to call on now our sister from Cebu, and she is the uh, president of the Archdiocese of Cebu um, Commission on the Laity and also the vice president like the Filipinas to formally welcome. We'd like to call on our sister, Fe Barino. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Fe. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I wish to welcome everyone here uh, in this platform. Your Excellencies, uh, Archbishop Jose Palma from Cebu, uh, Bishop Broderick Pabilio, and, uh, and the Reverend Fathers are watching us right now. And uh, of course, our brothers and sisters from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Uh, this has been a very um, helpful tool, these conversations that we have uh, during the past months. And uh, praise the Lord, we were able to connect each other to this platform. And so, once again, we welcome you all. And we hope that this uh, afternoon session will benefit us all as leaders, as stewards for God's uh, people. Amen. 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 Welcome. And now uh, I invite everyone to. Pause for a while for our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have gifted us with talents and gifts in order to shepherd your flock as stewards, as leaders in our different capacities. Here we are. We offer this time to you. We know that you are present everywhere in space and time. And even in this platform of social media, you are working in us in our different uh, capacities and in our lives. Help us to unite ourselves, to be able to fulfill our mission as baptized Christians, to lead your people, especially in these trying times. We want to be relevant, uh, Father, for, this, for, for your children, who wanted to grow more and to know more uh, in this, in what's happening these days. May these conversations today make us true disciples and fill our uh, fill us with your love and wisdom, so that we will be able to be relevant in every, in wherever place we are set. We are we are placed, and so Lord. We ask you to be with us. Send forth your Holy Spirit to be with us all this time and protect us from technical uh, distractions. And all this we pray through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Thank you very much, Sister Faith, for your wonderful prayer. Miss ko na kayo dyan sa Cebu. Sana oh, na 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 kami. Okay. And at this point, we are so happy and honored to have with us Archbishop Jose Palma. And uh, there's so many different ways to introduce uh, His Excellency. But uh, no, I, I know that you already know him. At this point, we just invited him to really uh, uh, give us an opening message. One, he's also part of the uh, uh, CBCP Episcopal Commission on Lay Apostolate. And at, uh, at the same time, he's also, of course, the Archbishop of Cebu. But um, more importantly, in the coming months, there will be a great celebration happening in the Philippines. And we would also would like to hear a little from His Excellency. So good afternoon and welcome. And we will be listening to you at this time, uh, Archbishop Jose Palma. Uh, thank you so much, June. And uh, Faye. Uh, greeted all of you. I just would like to repeat that greeting by saying, Mayong hapon ninyong tanan from, of course, uh, Bishop and, and all of you who participate in this Zoom meeting. I was telling June, even if only for, you know, a couple of minutes because uh, prior to this meeting, I have a commitment or I would say after this too, you know, I, I will have but to me, even the short period I have, I have with you uh, would be uh, a sign that, yes, this time I'm with you, but even when I leave, my heart stays with you in your meeting. Uh, yes, 
I'm very happy and I feel privileged to join you and this online conversation like we did last time with you, our committed and zealous lay leaders. We who are senior citizens, <laughs> when we think of COVID, we usually say the vulnerables. No? We used to think that the Facebook, the YouTube no, are only for teenagers. But, but this time, you know, we begin to appreciate and to be more conversant, uh, to be more aware of, of its use. You know? And we say, you know, it's not only for the young and the millennials you know? and, and for, your, for your apostles. But now we thank God that even us, a little bit more advanced in years, are into this. Now we begin to see that our meetings our recollections, our conferences, retreats, and even the sacri holy sacrifice of the Mass are done online. And we appreciate that. And in fact, last time we begin to realize how impactful this is. Because whereas in a situation where people can gather, we may gather a few hundred. But if we use online, there will be in fact, not only hundreds, but thousands of people. Just as a way of appreciating this, uh, I, I'd like to inform you that Faberino's <laughs> online program, no? I know we have thousands who would you know, follow her, no? things like that. I'm sure yours too, you know. So uh, I, now we should not underestimate this uh, as we recall our previous gathering, this very important gift of the Lord to us. Yes, uh, Many of our gatherings, reunions now are done virtually. We say that we are still in the lockdown you know, and quarantines, but we are not paralyzed. Because of the modern means of communication, we still can keep in touch with each other and, and certainly you know, we can still be aggressive, I would use that word, you know, even in our evangelization. And so I'd like to thank all of you who believe what we're doing now is very important because even if we are hundred of kilometers away from each other, you know, we keep that bonding and uh, you know, that solidarity and uh, we learn. Uh, we, we use certainly all means of communication to proclaim God's love and mercy to people. Uh, in fact, two Sundays from now, uh, in the Feast of Christ the King, you know, the year of the mission begins. And uh, if we think of that, then we begin to realize that we are not just here, you know, just to exist, but we say we are here for a reason. And that's because we have a mission. We put it that way. Uh, as I say this, I just would like to, I mean, like share with you the the general plan of CBCP. I'm sure many of you are aware, but just as a way of uh, also inviting you eventually to Cebu, you know, because while the last few months Cebu was the epicenter of COVID, you know, but to us, it is more the epicenter, <laughs> the cradle of Christian civilization. And uh, by God's plan, by God's plan, you know, uh, many of the big events in the forthcoming 500 YOC will be done in Cebu. But, but you know, just as a way of a broad perspective of the events we, we look forward to. Of course, with the Christ the King celebration, we open the year of mission, which will end officially as a focus in, in the face of Christ, on the face of Christ the King you know, uh, next year. But almost uh, uh, overlapping that, from the perspective of 500 YOC, in the Philippines, we start the 500 YOC on the solemnity of the of Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday, April 4. That is the fifth centenary of the first mass celebrated, of course, on Easter Sunday, April 4. Uh, but because uh, of the importance of baptism as well, uh, we in Cebu, in particular, will start uh, the fifth centenary 
500 by OC on April 14, the fifth centenary of the first baptism. And then it will extend up to, that's April 14, up to April next year when uh, April 14, again, we celebrate the big event of, uh, of baptism. But then 18 to 22, the culmination of mission with mission sending ceremonies. But throughout the year, what would be uh, paramount would be the many jubilees that we celebrate. Like we celebrate the various jubilees of various professions, of various aggrupations, of various faith communities. Uh, to us, you know, we will challenge the parishes to celebrate, you know, that jubilee. Ideally, during the foundation or the fiesta of the parish, and depending on the creativity of the parish priest, then a lot of jubilees will be celebrated. And in this regard, they may have jubilees of fishermen, of, of uh, farmers, you know, of uh, teachers, etc., etc. Also, like the the main theme and you know the the foundational spirit in all of this is rediscovering the importance of our baptism. In Cebu in particular, we are saying, we will rediscover that by saying, binuniaganako. and of course there are education, and of course celebration, and the uh, legacy that we would like to leave would also be outlined. Generally, uh, we will make a template, which we would share with other dioceses, and we hope that Throughout the year, both the visit of the Santo Nino, Magellan's Cross, the many seminars, and, and of course the teachings will make us aware that indeed we are blessed. We are blessed as a people. We have received, despite you know our difficulties, we have received blessings from the Lord. And the idea is because we live Christ, we share Christ, the gift that we receive is the gift that we also share. Basically, that's the whole spirit. And so we all journey as one. I'd like to end by saying all of us, all of us are important. The saintly Pope or John Paul II would say, we are all co-essentials, you know, the institutional church and especially the lady, the charismatic church. You who possess a lot of charisms, we are all important in building uh, this church and in sharing the gift that we receive with those in the periphery, in our parishes, in our communities, and also hopefully with people in other places. So Sakaron, this is how we look at next year. I repeat, no, there may be COVID, no, but we are not paralyzed. And with the modern means of communication, we know we can impact the life of other people, not only in our surroundings, but even those who are open to this uh, virtual conversations and of course all we need is the spirit and the zeal and the enthusiasm and again I'd like to underline as last time we learned a lot no? Labina, no? especially many of you are lay people you have many gifts which we do not have no? which you can share and in fact in many ways share more effectively no? Sakaron, I say I thank the Lord for all of this we continue to learn even as we continue to show our interest and entrust everything to the Lord. No? So, maraming maraming salamat, you know, for this uh, virtual uh, meeting. And I do believe we are doing something fruitful eventually no? for the growth of the church and, of course, for the good of many people. God bless. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much, Archbishop Jose Palma. Thank you for your very... Uh, inspiring uh, message to us yeah. and for giving us this time to just uh, listen to you. And yeah. we are excited. Various jubilees. So, yeah. yung isang jubilee lang, masaya na eh. Pero yung <laughs> ang damit <laughs> at ibang mga jubilee pa, marami yan, we marami are marami really yan, very, yes. very excited po. Okay. So, nakakatuwa po yan. Yeah. And again, welcome to everyone for those who just came in. Uh, we will be having a different format this afternoon because we would like to learn a little bit more on how to really use the online platform in growing in our faith and in growing in how to share the gospel and how to really become more disciples of the Lord. So we also would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, uh, Bishop Broderick Pabilio. He's also with us this afternoon. Um, 
and maybe later we'll be hearing also from him. At this point, uh, I, I want to uh, contextualize our discussion po, okay? And um, sh share with you what we heard from Archbishop Palma, okay? Right now, uh, I don't know if you could see my... Uh, uh, Joseph, kita ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Very clear po. Um, from what we heard from uh, Archbishop Palma, we are really preparing for the... Uh, uh, 500 YOC, 500 year of the coming of Christianity in the Philippines. And it's symbolized by the coming of uh, Magellan in the island of Limasawa and also the, the uh, celebration of the Easter Mass uh, in March, on March 31, uh, 1521. And in preparation for that, uh, even be before this whole thing, uh, sometime 2012, it was already under the presidency of uh, Archbishop Palma when a pastoral letter called Live Christ, Share Christ was uh, given. And through that time, since 2013, kita na po ni natin ngayon yung naging plano ng simbahan. 2013, Integral Faith Formation. 2014, Year of the Lady. Okay, 2015, Year of the Poor. Okay. Uh, 16 year of the family, 17 year of the parishes and uh, communion of communities, okay? 2018 would be uh, the year of uh, the clergy and consecrated persons, year of the youth in 2019, year of ecumenism, ngayon po yan, interreligious dialogue and indigenous people, and year of mission, na binanggit na rin po ni, Bishop, uh, ni Archbishop Palma, all in preparation for the coming for the coming of uh, the 2021 celebrations. And ano po ba ang naging dahilan in that why we are preparing for that? In that same statement in Live Christ, Share Christ, okay, it was said that these are the nine pastoral priorities of the church in the Philippines. In the time before us, we will focus on these dimensions of faith evangelization and discipleship one by one and it is most propitious that as we received the five the faith 500 years ago so with the 2021 we envision to become a truly sending church so maliwanag po yung vision natin we envision to become a truly sending church and if the goal and vision is to become a truly sending church how how can we become a sending church? And basically, we go back to the command of the Lord that is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them everything I have commanded you. Okay. Yun po yung dahilan kung bakit ngayon ginagamit natin itong platform na ito. Because by virtue of our baptism, all the members of the people of God have become missionary disciples. We want to teach disciples to become missionaries so that we can send them out. And we no longer say that we are just disciples or missionaries, rather that we are always missionary disciples. So this is the context by which we are gathered uh, this afternoon. We would like to use this time to really learn how to become disciple makers. Mamaya, papaliwanag pong mabuti yan ng ating speaker, okay? But the goal really is for us to understand that if we are to send disciples, then we need to make disciples. And if we are to make disciples, there has to be a disciple making process. Yun po yung isi-share namin. Now, Kailangan po, habang nakikinig kayo, dalawa po yung hat ninyo. Yung isang hat, nakikinig kayo bilang isang disciple. Pero yung isang hat, susuot din ninyo thinking, I want to be a disciple maker. Ang ibig sabihin, papano ko bang magagamit yung natututunan ko ngayon para maipasa ko naman sa ibang tao so that I can become a disciple maker who can make also other disciple makers. Yun po yung pag-aaralan natin ngayon. How can I become a disciple maker 
who can make disciples who are also disciple makers. So, sana po, nasasakyan pa ninyo ang ating uh, preparation ngayon. And what we're going to use now as a way to learn is a recorded video. A pre-recorded video. Dati-dati po, kumuka tayo ng speaker. Maganda naman po, maganda, masayip tayo. But since we are entering into an online method or process, may mga advantages po ang pre-recorded videos. Kaya po yun yung papakita natin importance na kailangan magamit natin. Why? Because in, in approaching our online disciple-making process, kapag pre-recorded po ang ginamit natin, one, there is always this accessibility. Kahit po maputol yung Zoom, kahit po uh, maging garbled yung usapan ngayon, anytime you can go to YouTube or you can access the link, makukuha nyo ulit yung parehong-parehong message. At pwede ninyong ipasa. Papasa, papadala lang nyo yung link sa ibang grupo and they can listen to the same pre-recorded message and there's a way to reproduce or to pass on that specific message. So kaya po kailangan, klaro yung we provide access to the people to get the information. Number two, aesthetics. Iba na po ang mga tao ngayon. Ang mga kabataan lalo na kapag nakinig, kailangan maganda yung pinanunod. And therefore, kapag pre-recorded, napapaganda, na-edit, maganda ang quality. Uh, so, yun po yung dahilan kung bakit gumagamit tayo ngayon ng mga pre-recorded so that it can become appealing to those whom we would like to invite. Number three, kapag po pre-recorded, concise. Hindi pwedeng ahaba ng kwento. Okay? Kaya kailangan maigsi lang kasi maigsi din yung attention ng kinakausap natin. Kaya bibilisan ko na. Okay? Uh, so, at pang-apat po, Kapag pre-recorded, usually yung message generic. Ang ibig sabihin, pwedeng gamitin ng kahit na sinong grupo. It can be contextualized. So mapapansin po nyo, walang binabanggit na grupo doon sa particular mga messages. Why? So that it can be used for other groups and it can be contextualized. So yun po yung, yung reason bakit gumagamit tayo ngayon. And last, kapag po pre-recorded, okay, napaplot nyo po yung message. Pwede nyong putulin at sabihin, next week, itong gagawin natin. Okay? But wait, there's more. Next week, itong gagawin natin. And there is a sense of excitement na bibuild po at na deliver natin yung buong series, parang Netflix lang. Okay? So, hindi po natin maririnig ngayon lahat, pero alam natin may kusunod and it builds some form of excitement and achievement also on the part of those going through it because maigse, magaganda, ngunit mayroong direksyon. At this point, uh, I'll be uh, uh, sharing already the first talk and... Um, Ayan po, hinahanap ko ngayon yung talk. <laughs> Our speaker this afternoon is a professor of theology at the Loyola School of Theology. He's a doctor of theology, graduating from Oxford University in Great Britain, and also has been a, a long-time uh, youth worker and um, discipler of young people. So, nandito po siya ngayon to share with us the roadmap okay, on online discipleship uh, with the uh, coordinator of Ligay ng Panginoon, Dr. Jake Yap. Sana po ay naririnig nyo ngayon itong presentation. We are offering in the Harvest Institute. This first presentation is called a Roadmap to Disciple Making. First, let's begin with some definition of terms. 
What do we mean by disciple making? Is it the same as discipleship? Well, no, not really. Discipleship means that we follow Jesus. But disciple making means that we help others to follow Jesus. Okay? We make disciples, other people who are now on their own or together with other disciples, but they are the ones following Jesus. Do you see the importance of disciple making? When we talk about discipleship, we following Jesus, it's only we following Jesus. It, you might say discipleship ends with us, with our following Jesus. But when we speak of disciple making, it means we make more disciples. And so the process continues. Then we are multiplying the number of people who are following Jesus. And in time, uh, those disciples that we help to make, they in turn will make other disciples. And so the process continues. I hope by now you are seeing the importance of not only discipleship, I'm not saying that that's not uh, a good thing, but we, must, we need to go a step further and now make disciples. That's very important. Now, to show you that that's very important, I want to read to you uh, a passage that we're very familiar with. This is often called the Great Commission. It's found at the very end of the Gospel of Matthew. We're very familiar with it. Okay? It says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Right? It's a very familiar passage. And you might think that, oh, you know, if you're doing a word study or a Bible study and you take notice of the, what's called the verbs, no? the, the, the action words. Okay, uh, my question is this. Which of these action words, uh, there are four of them. Go, make disciples, baptize, and teach. Which of these four action words are, is the most important? Okay, which one is the most important? You know, I heard this uh, question uh, by a priest, uh, and he, he, he asked a number of us, no? uh, which of these four verbs, he said, is the most important in the sentence? And in my case, being a teacher, <laughs> I, I said, hmm, I think the most important word is teach, teach. And other, uh, other people said, oh, it's go, or it's uh, baptize. No? I mean, these are all very important verbs. And this, uh, this person, he said, you know what? If you know a little Greek, uh, the language that the Bible was written, uh, if you know a little Greek, you will realize that three of them are... Um, they are helping verbs. No? They are not the main verb, but they are simply helping verbs. Grammatically, they're called participles. Okay? Uh, what are these participles? Three of them. And literally, they are translated going, baptizing, teaching. Okay? And what are they supporting? Okay? What main verb are they supporting? it turns out that the most important verb in that sentence is make disciples. In fact, that is the main command. If we are analyzing this sentence from a grammatical perspective, then Jesus is giving simply one command. Make disciples. Now, as you make disciples, you need to go and you need to baptize and you need to teach. But the main verb is make disciples. Okay, so we have a very strong case here that disciple-making is of paramount importance even to Jesus and disciple-making is what will make our work become bigger and more effective and we can multiply the work of building the kingdom if we 
if we make disciples. Okay, so disciple making is very, very important. Now, I call this talk a roadmap for disciple making. Why do why why a roadmap? No? What is the chief value of a roadmap? Well, first of all, let me show you a map, a physical map. You might call this a, a satellite image uh, from space of the island of Singapore. Okay, just for illustration purposes, here is a satellite image of Singapore Island. Now, uh, when Singapore began to bi to build a network of uh, of uh, the, the train system, the the mass rapid transit, what they call the MRT, um, the map of the expanding network of uh, trains, the subways, uh, uh, and so on, uh, resembles the island. So here you have uh, the map of the uh, the underground subway system in Singapore. It's a map, okay? It's a map of the, the, the train system. Now, what is the chief value of this map? Certainly, this kind of map doesn't tell you uh, everything about Singapore. And you might even lose a lot of the scenic spots. And uh, I mean, Singapore is not just a map, no? But a map is useful nonetheless if you, are, if you want to go from one point to another point. That's what a map is for. You, you have a direction. You have a purpose. You have a destination. And you look at where you are now and you look at where you want to go and the map will show you how to get there. Now that is what we're trying to do in this talk about disciple making that we need to know where we are and where we are bringing people to. That is the importance of a roadmap. And so the questions I'm asking here is, how do we help people after their initial conversion? Okay. How can we help them become disciples? How can we do that today uh, in uh, when we have to do some when we have to do things with physical distancing how can we do it today in this kind of situation that is what we are trying to uh, help you with in this series of talks now let me show you another uh, um, equation or let me show you a kind of um, a framework people plus purpose equals program okay People plus purpose equals program. So the people, who are the people we're working with? These are people who have already been through our first initiation, uh, our first uh, uh, Life in the Spirit seminar or the Choices seminar or the Christian Life series and so on. They have been baptized in the Spirit. They, they, they have made an initial yes to Jesus. Okay, these are the people, okay? What is our purpose? Our purpose is to form them into radical disciples. Uh, what is sometimes called intentional disciples. I like that uh, word, by the way, intentional disciple. It means that they really deliberately, purposefully, uh, decisively choose to follow Jesus. So our purpose is to form them into radical, intentional disciples. And so the people plus our purpose should give us a program. In this series of uh, talks, we want to share with you a way of pursuing that program using online means, using virtual means. Okay? This is something that we need to adjust to because of these unprecedented times. But it's a great challenge and we can still do it by uh, doing it in an online way. Now, let me share with you um, uh, something that um, uh, we are very familiar with. No? Um, and this is what we call uh, the wheel diagram. The wheel diagram. The wheel diagram gives us five ways of uh, helping people to become disciples. No? So, uh, let's review this wheel diagram. 
So you have a wheel, and the wheel has what's called a rim, the outer part of the wheel, the part that touches the ground, that, that kind of um, turns on the ground. Then we have the hub, which is the middle part of the wheel. Uh, and it is the hub that provides the power to the wheel. Okay? And the wheel, uh, uh, the, 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 the rim and the hub are connected through spokes. No? Um, and in this diagram, we have five spokes. This is a review. Uh, you know it already. No? Now, what happens if there are no spokes? You can have a very powerful hub spinning. Okay? It's, it's really uh, uh, spinning and turning, but if there are no spokes, then the rim itself will not turn. We need to connect the power from the hub to the rim. That's how simple the analogy is. No? And so we have five connections, uh, five spokes. Now, in this particular diagram, okay, many of you already know that the rim is the Christian life because that's where, as the expression goes, where the rubber hits the road, okay? where we meet real life. We live out our life in the world. That's our Christian life. Okay? That's the rim of the wheel. And the hub, the source of the power, is Jesus. Make no mistake, no? it is not we, it is Jesus who is the source of all power. But there has to be a way for the power of Jesus to come to us, to flow to us. And those are what we call the five spokes, the five means of growing in our Christian life. And these are precisely the five things that we need to impart to our uh, new Christians. No? Those who have just made a decision to follow Christ, they are babies in Christ, as St. Paul would say it, and we need to give them nourishing food. We need to help them to develop holy habits. Okay? These are all ways, these are all, all of them are ways to describe how we need to build up our brothers and sisters. So, in this series of talks, we will be sharing with you these five things or these ways of growing in our relationship with Christ, but with a spin, with a, with a novelty. Because we need to do it nowadays through online means, through virtual means, through uh, technology, through uh, phone calls and Zoom meetings and other means of getting together with the people that we are discipling. So uh, what we want to share with you, what the Harvest Institute wants to share with you is how to do it uh, through online means. Okay? So the five spokes are prayer, scripture, Christian fellowship or community life, service, and Finally, for Catholics, the sacraments. No? The sacraments are the means of grace by which the power of Jesus in the Holy Spirit can come to us. And so when we are connected to Christ through these five spokes, then we can turn. We can turn with Jesus. Um, where are we bringing them to? The final thing I want to share with you is a kind of uh, a vision of where we are bringing our people to. And um, let's say here I am, I'm trying to disciple another man to be a follower of Jesus. Okay? I call this the profile of a man of God. Okay? So a man of God, someone who really is becoming a mature disciple, must be in relation to God, he must be a moral man, a man who honors God. He must be a witness to Christ. No? How about in relationship with other Christians, with the church and with a community of disciples? How must this man look like? He must be an active member of the, the church and of a Christian community. He must be a ready servant. He must be a brother to his other brothers. 
What about in relation to his own family? Okay, uh, let's say that he is a married man. Uh, what is the vision for for such a disciple? Well, he must be a dependable head of the family. He must be a loving husband and a dedicated father. What about in relation to uh, work, a job, and the wider society? Well, I would say he must be a reliable employee or employer. He must be leavened to kind of uh, uh, build up those around him. He must be a good neighbor. Okay. Um, what about in terms of his own uh, self? He must be a man of wisdom, a steward of his body, and a man of good order when it comes to his time and his finances. As you can see, these are many things that uh, we want this new Christian to become. That is where we want him to go. Okay? Um, and the way to get there is through the roadmap. Okay? So in this next series of talks, we will be sharing with you the various means of building up and helping other people to become disciples. And like I said, we need to do it nowadays through online means. We have no choice. I'm not great with technology. I'm sometimes very slow with technology, but in the last few months, I have had no choice but to learn. And you can also use technology in order to make disciples. So once again, brothers and sisters, uh, making disciples is a command of Jesus. Arguably, it's the most important command, okay? Um, and we need to be zealous in making disciples because that is how we can help other people to keep on following the Lord. So we hope that uh, in this series, you will, uh, you will learn how to help others by being relational with them, to grow in their prayer life, to love and live the Word of God, to change their lives and to overcome sin in their lives, to be service-oriented, and finally, to have an evangelistic lifestyle. So we hope that we can help you and so that you also can go and help others. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. J.K. So, I hope na nakapakinig po kayo ng mabuti. And maganda po yung uh, pinakita uh, na sa atin ni J.K. na first of the series, explaining a certain roadmap. So, mamaya po magkakaroon tayo ng opportunities to ask questions para po makita natin paano yung mag apply sa atin. But uh, at this time, okay, may papakita lang po akong connection. Sabi natin, we want to be able to contextualize, okay? Yung pong ating um, uh, na naririnig sa ating mga sitwasyon po, okay? So, we want to go back to this um, PowerPoint presentation. May binanggit po si Jake Yap kanina dito na sabi niya, okay? Um, this is the roadmap and basically where we want to bring our people. At ang ginamit po niyang uh, example ng roadmap ay yung alam na alam naman po nating uh, the, the Christian wheel, which is basically prayer, fellowship, study, service, and sacraments. Madali pong intindihin niyan dahil sanay na po tayo, nakikita, po na, na, nakita na po natin yan in the past. But there are groups okay, that can understand this particular roadmap or particular process okay, in their own experiences. Sometimes they are parishes, sometimes they are communities, okay? and therefore, kailangan ma-decide nila anong process, anong roadmap yung gagamitin nila. 
Kung isa po itong uh, Protestant group, kamukha ng uh, purpose-driven ministry, ang gagamitin nilang sample is, we need to bring people in, bring them in, we need to build them up, we need to train them for, and we need to send them out. Okay? Yan, po yung, yan po yung kanilang gagamitin. Yung isang parokya po sa Nubaliches, binubuo niya yung kanyang community, ang sabi niya, gusto ko sa aking parokya, I want to gather them and make them grow. Teach them to give and then let them go. Okay? Yun po yung kanilang uh, prosesong gagamitin. Again, in a purpose-driven ministry, sabi nila, worship, lead, lead people to worship, fellowship, discipleship, service, evangelization. In other groups, sabi nila, we want to win them, build them, equip them, and allow them to be reproducing Christians. Iba't iba po yan. Okay? So marami pong lumalabas ngayon ng iba't ibang mga 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 grupo at naiintindihan nila ang ibig sabihin noon. Sabi nila, we want to engage our people, establish them, equip them, empower them. Pag po nagsalita sa ganun, ibig sabihin alam nila, may proseso silang sinusunod. At dahil may proseso ng sunod, they know where to bring their people. And that is the challenge with us. In your parish, in your community, find out kung ano yung naiintindihan na pwede yung gamitin proseso in building up your community. Especially if it's an online, meron kang maliit na grupo, okay? gusto mo silang to bring them to one point, from one point to another, okay? there is a way of bringing people, bring them and beca to be become members of that particular group, slowly raise them to maturity, teach them how to serve others, and then send them to mission. Yan po yung simpleng proseso na po pwedeng mapag-aralan ng particular grupo ninyo because it has to be contextualized. And usually kung parokya yan, kailangan naiintindihan din ng parish priest. Kung kasama siya at kasama yung parish pastoral formation council, kailangan yung terminology ng proseso ay naiintindihan niya. Now, kung sabihin membership, maturity, parang ibang tunog niya na. Gusto ko pa rin prayer, scripture, sacraments. Then that, that will be the process that you're going to use. Kasi you need the support of the parish priests, of your community leaders, of the parish pastoral formation groups, or yung mga malilit yung grupo, kailangan nagkakaintindihan kayo in terms of language kung ano ang gagamitin ninyong uh, process. Okay? And kailangan alam din ninyo ano yung available na resources sa inyo. Kasi po, okay, iba't iba ang, ang, ang uh, configurations ng mga grupo. There are groups that have different resources. So in terms of gathering them and making them members, yung mga charismatic, ay gagaling ko yan sa Life in the Spirit Seminar. Ang gagamitin ko, LSS o Christian Life Program. E para dun sa ibang mga parishes na establish yung Alpha, ay Alpha ang aming membership program. Yung iba naman, sabi na meron kaming Live Christ, Share Christ. Sa isang parokya, meron kaming Paris Renewal Experience at iba pa po. Kailangan malaman ninyo ano yung available doon sa grupo ninyo na maapag-aagri kayong yun yung gagamitin ninyong proseso to bring them into a membership. To make them understand, we would like to become part of this group. At pag po naging member na sila, you will build them up or you will equip them okay? or you will make them stronger. Ano yung ibibigay ninyo panibagong programang meron kayo? Hindi yung bigyan ulit natin ng LSS. At next year, LSS ulit. Okay? So kung minsan paulit-ulit na lang yung naibibigay natin. Ano yung ibibigay nating training program pag sila ngayon ay uh, tuturuan na nating maging servants or ministry? Paano natin silang palalaguin? At ano yung ituturo natin na available sa atin so that we can send them out on mission? So these are just examples of different available programs which you can use in the different processes that are to, the, to you to be decided on. Last na po siguro ito, 
yung unang level is a disciple making process. Gusto nating padaanin yung mga tao natin and train them to become disciples so that they can become disciple makers. They become disciple makers at some point when you make them as facilitators. Panibagong programa na naman yan. These are facilitator training practices. And then you can also raise them up pag naging core leaders na sila, servant leader course. And finally, you, the whole community or parish can come up with community campaigns. Malayo na po yan. Inibigyan po lang po kayo ng parang understanding on how this process can particularly work on a on a one by one uh, uh, level pa paano po umiikot meaning kung facilitator na yan at may facilitator training process the process to gather in them hindi na LSS ang ituturo niyo na how to conduct an LSS okay so yun po yon nagbabago po yung programa because you're building up okay now you're raising up the level of your membership. So, yan po yung context nung pinakita sa atin ni Jake Yap na um, training program because we want to understand that there should be intentional discipleship. Gusto natin tayo intentionally we train our people, we train our small groups to become intentional disciples so that they also know that they need to bring their people okay, into different levels of discipleship. To the point that may picture the profile of a man of God. Kung ikaw ay disciple na, anong klaseng tao ka? Bibigyan natin sila ng picture. Bibigyan natin sila ng checklist. Nagbago ka na ba in the way you relate to your husband or your wife? Nagbago ka na ba in the way you relate? So mga dahan-dahan po mga steps yan na maaari po nating gamitin. Yun po. Okay, and uh, at this point, hihinto muna po ako sandali okay, before we proceed to the next talk. Mapansin niyo po, 17 minutes lang po yan and yung susunod po, maiksi din lang but it, it's building up from one talk to the other so that yung mga gusto po nyong bigyan ng uh, mga talks, pwede nyong kunin na lang sa YouTube, sabihin, pakinggan natin to and then pag-aralan natin. Okay? At this point, uh, i-open ko lang po sa questions. Kung meron pong mag gustong magtanong, uh, pwede po natin sagutin. Taas lang po na kamay kung meron po kayong mga tanong. Si Bishop Pavilio po, Sir John. Hi, sige po, Bishop. Sir John, uh, meron ako ang comment no, sa profile ninyo. Pa ano, pa, uh, ano yung produkto ang gusto natin, hindi ba? Yung profile. No, um, ay, may dalawang comment na ako. Siguro hindi na ipasok doon ang environment. Ah, no, dapat may relation tayo sa environment. No? So hindi na ipasok doon. Tapos hindi din na ipasok doon ang ating engagement sa society no sa political situation natin no hindi hindi ay makakaiwas doon so as a, a, ano ba yung profile ng Kristiyano sa harap ng society no sa lalong lalo na sa harap ng politika no so, sino po ang dalawang bagay thank you very much bishop ito po yung kagandahan ng conversation that when leaders converge ideas emerge. Yeah. <laughs> so, malaking uh, bagay po na naisama na natin yan that in the profile of a man or a woman of God, may iba't iba pa po na mga uh, aspeto ng buhay natin na dapat matuto tayong to relate with. Environment, okay, as an important one, and also yung uh, uh, Christian social responsibility based on our Christian social teachings. Paano po tayo makaka- uh, tugon dyan. Any other question po?
Sige po, kung wala tayong katanungan, uh, titina ko po kung maipapasok natin itong susunod nating uh, Dali lang po ah, medyo mahirap hanapin itong mga ano natin. Susunod po natin ngayon na uh, presenter ay si uh, Brother Abyong Kalo. He is the uh, 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 seasoned uh, youth minister and leader of the Ang Lingkod ng Panginoon. And is also a, uh, a member of a uh, group of celibate men called uh, Servants of the Word. He's a very effective and creative youth worker. And ito po yung ipapaset na ngayon, yung next dun na si series on how we can build Um, people in, in 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 relationship in their relationship with the Lord, and it is called disciple making online our relationships. Sana po Hi, this is Abion Kalo, and welcome to Harvest Institute. This is the second talk on our series, making disciples online. Well, let me begin by looking at the second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter four. Here, Paul says to Timothy. Preach the word. Be urgent in season and out of season. We need to remember that the reason why we preach the word is so that we can make disciples. That is the main content of the Great Commission, which we can find in Matthew 28, verse 19, when Jesus said to his disciples, Go therefore and make disciples to all nations. Preaching of the word is one of the first steps in making disciples. And so I think it's okay for us to say, make disciples, be urgent in season and out of season. Let's take note of the word, be urgent. We are to make disciples not next month, not next week, but now. In season and out of season. Whether there's pandemic or where there's more freedom, no pandemic, we are to make disciples. We all know that it takes time to make disciples. And this is not done by just giving a manual to a person, asking that person to read and study it. And then after absorbing everything in the manual, we have produced a disciple. We all know it doesn't work that way. Disciple-making involves relationship. And relationship is the key. The title of this talk is Relational Disciple-Making. Why relational? You see, relationship or friendship can be a good shock absorber. When we make disciples, 
we can never go away with asking the person to let go of some developed bad habits and taking on new good habits. And there's pain there. There can be resistance. But because of our relationship with them, disciple making becomes easier and it becomes doable. People really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So it's not just about teaching them. It's actually showing them as someone who has a relationship with them. Discipleship happens in a fertile ground of relationship. Relationship becomes the environment wherein we can actually influence another person. So how do we do that? Before going to the how, let us talk about principles. Principles are timeless. Even if situations or conditions change, principles don't. And so therefore, we can actually look at some time-tested principles. And I would like to use the scripture as our basis for that. In fact, relational disciple-making is not something that's being invented in the 20th century. Jesus himself used that. In the Gospel according to John chapter 1, John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And two of his disciples wanting to follow Jesus went to Jesus. And what did Jesus say to them? Jesus said to them, Come and see. Effectively, Jesus is telling them, Live with me. Stay with me. So you will be able to learn from me. It's in that intimate relationship where we can effectively make disciples. And what are these principles? Let's look at the first letter of Paul to Thessalonians, chapter 2. We will start with verse 7 and end with verse 12. Let me read that to you. But we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God. How holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. The first principle is found in verse 7. It says here, But we were gentle among you. See, gentleness is the first principle in order for us to not only effectively disciple them, we need to be gentle with them as someone caring for a dear or for a loved one. Let's be gentle to them, not to be too abrasive or to be demanding to them. Let's be comforting, but at the same time, firm. We need to do our disciple-making with gentleness and with much respect. The second principle is in verse 8. It says here, We love you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our lives. The basis for our disciple-making is love. If we don't love the brother or the sister placed under our care, then we don't have the right to disciple them. I remember when I was still serving in YA, the Young Adults Program of Ang Ligaya ng Panginoon, one of my prayers was this, Lord, 
teach me how to love them. Because if I will not learn how to love these kids, then I don't have a place here. Love is the basis for our disciple making. We care for them. And therefore, we open up our lives to them and we also are going to enter into their lives to be interested in their own interests, to be involved in their personal lives, to celebrate with them, to mourn with them, to be with them because we care for them and we love them. The third principle is in verse 9. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day. The third principle is diligence and perseverance. Well, disciple-making doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen as quick as our snap. But it takes time. And we need to be patient. We need to be persevering. We need to work hard. We need to study. We need to pummel our bodies. We need to be, you know, be there like uh, someone teaching a baby how to walk. We need to work with patience, with perseverance, and of course, again, coupled with gentleness and love. The fourth principle is this. Verse 10. You are witnesses. And so is God. How holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believe. The fourth principle is integrity. As man and woman, we are to be beyond reproach. And this is not just about not sinning. But this is also about not doing anything that would scandalize them. We need to set ourselves as examples. And so therefore, like what St. Paul says in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, he says, And therefore I pummel my body and subdue it, lest after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. We need to walk the talk. It is important for us, if we want to develop friendship with them and making that friendship as the grounds where we can actually disciple them, it is important for us that we also retain and maintain our friendship with God, our fellowship with God. The first epistle of John, he says, We preach to you that which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. If we are to make friendship, as a way to evangelize them. It would be hard for us to do that if we are not friends with God. Integrity is important that we set ourselves as examples to them. And so therefore we can say to them, imitate me as I imitate Christ. The last principle is this, verses 11 and 12. For you know that we dealt with you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God. The fifth principle is encouragement. We want to build them up. And so we want to set them for success. And so provide them or give them simple Steps, baby steps that would build them up. And let's encourage them. When they fall, let's encourage them. Let's catch them when they do something great. Let's honor them. Let's teach them with gentleness. But building their confidence, building their self-esteem, especially their own image in God, would greatly help them. Encourage them. Comfort them and urge them. Those are the five biblical principles that we can follow in order for us to disciple them but at the same time to strengthen our relationship with them. But how do we do that with our limitations these days? How do we actually develop friendship, deepen relationship with them when we cannot meet them? 
Well, let's remember that St. Paul did a lot of his disciple-making or pastoring his churches remotely. That's why we have a lot of his letters because he was doing this remotely. He would write letters to the different churches. He would write letters to his children, his spiritual children like Timothy. And so therefore, it is possible. And we are actually in a much better place than St. Paul. We have social media. We can engage our brothers and sisters instantly and easily. But first, it's obvious. We need to be in those platforms. We need to have Facebook messengers. We need to have Instagram. We need to have a Snapchat. We need to have Twitter. We need to have Viber. We need to have WhatsApp. There's a lot of platforms out there where we could actually reach out to them. But we need to remember three things. And these are also principles. First is, be nice. Be nice. Post positive things. Post encouraging messages in the scripture, from the scripture, and post it in Facebook or social media. Send this to your members. Ask them, how's their day? Ask them, how's their children? Be involved in their lives. But it's easy for you to connect. It's easy for us to connect and to be nice with them, to be encouraging with them because of social media. The second is be consistent. Consistency is the key. St. Paul is the champion of consistency. That's why he wrote a lot of letters. He wants to be in touch in his people. We need to keep ourselves, we need to keep showing up in the lives of our people. But consistency is easier said than done. But it can be done. And in order for us to make it a little bit easier, we need to plan and to schedule. Like, you know, Sunday, post your reflections on the gospel reading, the, the mass, you know, the liturgical gospel reading. Monday, post a, a picture or a message, an inspiring message or a quotation. Tuesday, post a Bible in pictures. Thursday, th throwback Thursday. Friday, promote an event. Saturday, call them up, ask them how they're doing, ask for their prayer intentions. You can just be creative, but plan and schedule. Planning makes consistency easier and it creates mental energy. Last but not the least, be yourself. Even though they cannot stay with us, they can see us, but let's be authentic. When we communicate to them using social media, be open to them. Share your pains and your struggles to them. It is actually good for them to see you struggle. And they will also learn from that. It also makes you accessible to them. That you are not someone who is just placed on a pedestal. That you are a real person. But it will be an encouragement to them to see your growth as well. And they will easily open up to you. If you also share your own struggles your own pains with them. Be yourself. You don't have to pretend that you're someone else that they would look up to. Let me now end this. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful that someone befriended us. We are grateful for the many times that this person has wasted his life on us. Now we're given the chance to make an impact to other people's lives. Let's waste our time with these people placed under our care. Let's build strong relationships with them. And in doing so, we also make strong disciples. God bless us all.
Thank you very much, Brother Abiyong. Maraming maraming salamat sa tinuro mo sa amin sa hapong ito. And uh, I, I do hope that uh, nakita natin yung ating uh, presentation ngayon, again, from a perspective of a disciple maker. That we want to provide people an opportunity to enter into a process okay, by which we, they can use in order to bring people from one step to the next and again, ulitin natin, it can be a model, kamukha nung binanggit ni Jacob kanina about prayer, scripture, study, fellowship, sacrament, and it could be other uh, formats, okay? But at least alam natin where we are trying to bring our people with a certain goal. Anong klaseng tao ba ang gusto nating maging itong mga uh, tinutulungan natin? I think... Importante maintindihan natin that this happens in a context of a small group. This happens in a context of a community. And that is why for those who have no experience yet of what it means to become a small group or a, a cell group okay, or a men's and women's group, yun po dapat matutunan din natin. Or yung concept ng basic ecclesial community. Wherein in a basic ecclesial community, Kailangan yung meetings ay may pinupuntahan okay? from one uh, uh, step to the next. We're leading the members of our basic ecclesial communities towards this particular roadmap. So yun po ang itinuturo sa atin. But this time, we are hoping that we can enable people to lead them by using the online May mga susunod po po silang series, maybe in the next months, i-share po natin yan. But it's basically now how to lead your small group using online online features, this online environment to lead them into uh, a process of disciple making. Again, to the Harvest uh, Institute, Dr. J. Kiap and uh, Brother Abiyong Kalo, thank you. Thank you very much. At this point, I would like to open this uh, time for some questions and comments. For those who would like to uh, give comments, feel free. I would like to also acknowledge the presence of uh, Brother Arcadio Tamayo, who is with us now also this afternoon, who is the national president of the Philippine Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services, Inc. Yeah, <laughs> Inc. So, Phil Chris, so welcome, Brother uh, Kajo, and um, we are happy that you are with us this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Any comments po? Meron po ba mga comments tayo this afternoon? Questions? Hello po. Ma'am Noemi, uh, at saka si Ma'am, yes, unahin ko muna si Ma'am Noemi, please. Ma'am, naka-mute po kayo. Ayan. Ganda happen po once again. Uh, yung pong discussion about relational uh, disciple making. Uh, at my end lang po, ano? It seems so... It seems harder if it will be done online because of the description per se. It is relational. I don't know how it can be as effective as when we go to the normal way of doing it. And uh, how shall we, do we have already, uh, how is this? Some uh, situations in the past that we have dealt with relational disciple making and how effective is this based on the past experience? Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Ma'am Noemi. Ang sinasabi ni Ma'am Noemi is, uh, we, tinuturoan nyo kami na, mag, na gamitin itong relational uh, disciple-making online na bukang napakahirap. Okay? Iyon nga person-to-person nga, medyo difficult na eh. Okay? Eh, ngayon pa na online tayo. Okay? And then, meron bang modelo? Totoo po yan, Ma'am Noemi. Especially with our age. Ayan, Iba yung edad natin. Tayo ay mga digital migrants. No? 
Okay? Mm-hmm. Ibang iba yung story yang yan sa mga kabataan ngayon. Kaya ko ini-emphasize to. Noon pong magkwento hang ko lang kayo ano po ano. Noong ako yung ini-evangelize noong nag, nag tumutulong sa akin, wala pa pong ganitong format. Telepono ang ginagamit. So yung pong tuma- tumutulong sa akin, tumatawag sa bahay. Okay? In order to be relational. Kinukumusta ako. At pag wala po ako sa bahay, okay, ang nakakausap yung nanay ko. At some point, magkaibigan na sila ng nanay ko. At some point, kilala na rin niya yung mga kasamahan namin sa bahay. Alam din niya kung anong oras ako makakauwi. At hindi ako makakatakas kasi pagdating ko, sabi ng nanay ko, Uy, tumawag si ganyan. Kinukumusta ka? Tawagan mo. Okay? That was the... the, the That was the, 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 the world at that time. Okay? Pero ginamit po yan noong panahong yun in order to connect telepono lang. Okay? Yung pagdi-disciple. Ngayon po, pabalikan ko ngayon yung panahong ngayon, sa atin talagang mahirap po kasi hindi tayo na-establish na magkaroon ng relationship online. Pero pag ito po inapakinggan ng mga kabataan, sabi nila, ha? Eh talaga namang friends kami and we can connect online. And I hope that dahan-dahan matututo tayo on how to build friendships. Okay? And uh, during this time, ako po meron akong small group. Kapag Tuesday afternoon, magkikita-kita na kami sa online. And si Father Herb Schneider, okay? nandun si Mr. Vic Gutierrez, okay? at iba pang mga leaders. At yun po yung aming small group kasi nakasanayan na po namin, natutunan na namin. Anong challenge po? Ang challenge, sana matutunan natin paano maging parte ng isang grupo na makakatulong sa atin so that we can really encourage one another to become disciples of the Lord. At yung iba pong mga tao naman natin, meron din silang opportunity to train people okay, in their small groups para pumatuto sila and make this, their people of their own disciple makers. So, naintindi ako po yung question. Uh, mahirap po talaga, uh, especially from our side. But ang hope natin, ma-share natin itong concept na ito, lalo na sa mga kabataan. Kasi yung mga kabataan, naintindihan nila ito. Alam nilang, yes, pwedeng mangyari. We can develop deep friendships even in this online environment. Ma'am Noemi, sana nasagot ko po yung tanong nyo. Yeah, thank you po. Apo. Thank you. Ma'am Tess, ikaw naman. Uh, okay po. Ay. Um, good afternoon po. Uh, ako, uh, ano rin po kasi, uh, nakaka-relate po ako dun sa topic natin ka, mula pa kanina dun sa unang topic ni Doc, ni Doc Jake. Uh, kasi charismatic po ako. Uh, dito po sa Paumbong, ang grupo ko po is Kinosis Catholic Charismatic Community. Tapos, ah, uh, na kasama rin po ako sa Diocesan Charismatic, ang Kawa ng Diyos Charismatic Community. Na at doon po habang nagtuto habang nagpapaliwanag si Doc Jake at saka si Brother Abyong. Abyong. Eh, Abyong. Abyong. Opo, Abyong. Eh talagang nakita ko ang hirap ng ang hirap maging isang making disciple. Sabi ma disciple maker. Ay uh, Lalo na po, lalo na po ngayon, ayun ang problema nga natin yung pandemic. Pero salamat at yung ginagawa natin ito, naka, 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 ano sa atin, naka-inspire para ipagpatuloy pa natin. Actually po, may grupo po ako sa gawing malolos. Yun naman po yung Christ on the Block. Charismatic din po siya pero the way of, parang way ng BEC na may pay sharing tapos with healing. Eh alam niyo po ba sa totoo lang napaka totoo po 'yon na ang pag pag ano ng ang pagbuo ng disciple mahirap talaga pero totoo rin din po 'yon na tama na talagang naging maliwanag sa akin na ang ang making yung ang, ang kailangan sa making this discipleship is uh, yung relationship una yung relationship at yun nga po, sabi ko, habang pinapaliwanag ni Brother Abyong, eh, nakaka-relate ako kasi yun talaga yung ginagawa ko sa ngayon, lalo na yung pong, yung pong 
grupo ko doon sa gawing malolos, mga may ano na po yung mga senior, mga senior citizen. Pero po nakakatawa, uh, nung sinabing pwede na lumabas yung mga, yung ibang mga senior, basta doon lang sa may lugar nila. Ay, naku, talagang sabik na sabik po sila doon sa ano. Kaya, kaya naman, kahit ako'y malayo sa kanila at ang hirap bumiyahe papunta doon, talagang nandun yung risk. Pero, sabi ko, ay, ay, kaya habang nagpapaliwanag si Brother Abby, ay, naku, tama naman pala yung ginagawa ko, sabi ko. Tapos yung pong, yung pong ano naman, yung tungkol sa, sa yung kailangan itong ang media, ano totoo? So, ang hirap po. Kasi kat, meron po, is, ang prayer meeting po namin dito sa Kinosi, sa Paumbong, ano po, uh, virtual din, at uh, ganito rin po online. Eh, ano pa lang, 6pm po yung aming, ano, ako po yung taga-tawag, taga-call lang. Uh, eto na, mag-start na tayo. Pero minsan, nakakalungkot. <laughs> ang hirap-hirap tumawag. Nakakatawa na yung makawalo ka, makasampo. Pero yung misa may time na apat lang. Eh kaya sabi ko doon sa mga kasama ko, o oh, kahit apat, tuloy tayo. Basta ang mahalaga, eh magawa natin yung ano na to bilang panawag sa Panginoon. Kaya po ako'y nagpapasalamat sa sangguni ang laiko ng Pilipinas. Sa tulong mo po, Brother June at ni Brother Rokiel. Nasa pamamagitan nitong, no, nitong gawain natin, eh lalong na-enhance yung aking pagiging leader. Although mahirap, ang hirap pong magparami. Diyan, sabi nga, sabi ka, kailangan daw yung maging multipliers tayo, maging mag-multiply. Eh, pa, ang hirap-hirap ngayon, lalo ngayon na ano, pandemic. Pero, na-inspired naman ako. At kasi, kasi minsan, mahilig din po nga kasi kung magpapasa ng unting mga message. Yung mag-post, eh, parang na ano ko, baka ako nakukulitan sila sa akin. Pero sabi, sabi ko, eh, tama naman pala ginagawa ko. Sige, okay na. Tuloy ko na lang din. Makulitan sila o hindi. Basta, ito yung pinasasabi ni Lord. Yan na po. Salamat po. Salamat, salamat, Ma'am Tess. So, be nice, be consistent. And yes. kamala na yun, be yourself. Be yes, and be gentle. <laughs> be gentle. <laughs> Opo, si Brother Ted, nagtaas ng kamay sa kasi Kuya Tony. Unahin ko lang si Ted Santiago. Okay? Yun, uh, una sa lahat, salamat dun sa mga speakers natin na napakaganda ng pagigay nila. Uh, ang point ko lang dito is, hindi naman natin sineset as yung dating approach. In fact, they have given us what the present dispensation kasi may nangyayari. Uh, gusto ko lang i-drive dito is sinuport uh, ang simbahan. Yung BEC, pakikilaho at pagmimisyon. Kaya sa isang ordinaryong tao na walang kakayahan sa mga social media platforms na ganito, doon pa rin tayo sa lumang setup. Give them awareness uh, to see their worth, no ba? bahagi sila ng simbahan. And at the same time, pag na-aware na sila, imumu natin sila at saka natin i-organize into manageable number. Kasi only through BC, yung sinasabi ni Bishop kanina, components na hindi na atapotan sa module, yung economic, political, cultural, as well as yung setup. Ang isang Mas, mas nakukuha yun eh. Kasi yung context ng mga tao, the BC, uh, ordinary day-to-day struggle ng mga tao. And part of or, organ, yung issue-based. Ano yung kanilang uh, talo kayong kinalagyan? Paano mo sila kinalagyan ng weight component dun sa kanilang like halimbawa, ang isang matingkad ngayon is yung kaliwa lang. Diba? How can you organize people in order for them to see yung great component nung struggle nila. Yun lang yun. And thank you very much. Oh, maraming maraming salamat. Uh, Brother Ted, medyo naging choppy lang po si Brother Ted ng konti pero maliwanag naman po yung gusto niyang sabihin. Hindi tayo lumalayo doon sa original approaches natin. Okay? Magagamit pa po natin yun, okay? whether in an online or yung face-to-face. 
Kaya po, gumagawa lang tayo ngayon ng paraan para mapakinabangan natin itong sa sitwasyon natin ngayon. And para doon sa mga tao na hindi kayang pumasok doon sa environment na to, ay ganun pa rin. Be nice. Okay? Be yourself. Pupuntahan natin yan. Aabutin natin sila. Tahanapin natin saan. Ano yung fake component? Saan tayo makakalapit? Paano natin magagamit yung mga struggles nila para mailapit sila sa Panginoon? Salamat, uh, Brother Ted. Kuya Tony Loveria po. Tagasaan po kayo kay Tony. Pakilala po kayo. Gandang uh, hapon po sa inyo lahat. Uh, ako po yung tigataytay. Pero dalawa po ang grupong aming uh, kinaaniban. Yung isang grupo po ay tungkol sa mga mag-asawa. At uh, yung isa naman ay kasalukuyan nag apply pa rin kami. Yung Philippine Institute of Architects Catholic Guild. Uh, dito sa isang uh, sa professional organization namin, bilang mga arkitekto, napalaki ng tungkulin namin na para maprotektahan at pangalagaan yung environment natin. Si Bishop uh, Pabello kanina, yung uh, binibigyan ng chance. So, uh, sa aming uh, binabalak na programa, gamitin namin yung mga yung aming profesyon para makahikayat. Kasi uh, definitely, halos uh, kami yung mga procreator ng mga structure. No? And then, kung paano naman maiko-convert natin to into a Christian na uh, uh, values, na bilang mga professional uh, designer, dapat may magkaroon mga awareness campaign para maprotektahan natin. So sa ganitong kaparaanan, maililing natin doon sa ating ginagawa as a part ng CBCP program. Uh, and then dito naman sa mga mag-asawa, eh, nagsasagawa kami ng bagong program. Kailangan kasi sabayan natin yung, yung napapanahong uh, mga, ano eh, mga pangyayari like yung pandemic. So online ngayon. So since... Ang grupo po namin ay halos mga senior pero kinakailangan sumabay tayo sa mga kabataan ngayon. Kung uso sa mga kabataan yung TikTok, eh ginagamit na rin ho namin ngayon itong TikTok, no? <laughs> Tik as in tik, no? Yung uh, palakayan ng uh, iba't ibang mga karanasan at mga kalooban sa bawat pangyayari, no? So, yung karanasan ng mga mag-asawa para makarelate, no? Sabi nga nyo, relational. So, gamitin natin itong platform natin through uh, YouTube, through ganito. And then, samantalahin natin, napakaraming mga sistema. Kaya nga natutuwa ako na itong pagtitipo natin na ito, eh, para magawa natin yung ginagawa ng mga malalaking, malalaking negosyante. Nagagawa nga nila yung networking, you know? So, sa atin, mas dapat natin isagawa ito. Bawat isa, eh, kailangan makahikayat ng sampo. Yung sampo, makahikayat ulit ng tiga sampo. Maging mga leaders. So, sa ganitong paraan, eh, magagawa talaga natin, no? Although iba't iba yung ating mga pamamaraan, pero kung ito yung maigagawa natin ng isang malino na module, like yung tanong ng ating isang kasama kanina, kung meron ng mga existing iba, isishare na lang para mas mapapabilis natin yung ating mga pamamaraan. So yun lang po. Maraming salamat. Salamat po, Brother Tony. At uh, meron pa tayong natutulang TikTok na galing sa kanila. Yes. Kaya, tala kayan, inspirasyon. Kawang gawa. Yeah. <laughs> so, yan ang kanilang talk. Okay, ha? Salamat. So, si, uh, nagtaas po ng kamay si Brother Kajo. So, welcome, Brother Kajo. Yeah, thank you, Brother June. Uh, actually, I was, uh, alam mo, blessing. Blessing ito talaga ng uh, nakatawag ako kay Joseph at sabi kong gano'n, oy, meron pala tayo. Hindi ko nakita yan. So he gave me a uh, link and then I was able to really just catch it. Uh, yung ke, uh, Father Abyo. Wow, it's nice. At saka yung question lang. I'd like to share our experience uh, well, sa spirit of love. And then myself also because alam mo naman na uh, tayo eh nandito Chancellor din sa ating medical university. And our challenge was really how Uh, to shift from our traditional face-to-face -face in our uh, forming our students, of course, and, and then going uh, on distant education or online learning. And then the shift was really uh, something as a challenge. And I'd like to really just share on how we were able to apply this also with our community. For well, one thing, uh, we've been having webinars, so we had to train all of our faculty, including myself as a chancellor, to go online and then uh, to use our uh, e-learning platform 
but we had to learn principles on how to really just connect with our students and how to make them feel that we are like uh, face to face with each other but on screen and how to make them feel like they are really being cared for and how they should and I'd like to share with you that research has been done that is the online learning, if effectively done, is as good as face to face. And this is what I'd like to just share that if done well with the principles that have been so mentioned. And then, of course, uh, some, uh, some web uh, design and then, of course, uh, uh, instructional design uh, that will be done, then it can be as effective as face-to-face. -face. Yun lang yung sinasabi natin. One of the principles that we have learned, Holberg in 1983 came out with what they call didactic conversation. In other words, everything that we do online cannot be as like you're teaching in the classroom or you're talking now uh, to them in face-to-face, uh, -face, but it was actually just saying like para kayo nag-uusap lang na magkapatid, magkaibigan, matagal nang hindi nagkikita. Something that makes you feel like, hey, I'm here for you and you're here for me. And then we're able to really just make the students really now appreciate online. And then they just love being there online because they can communicate now. I'm just saying that this may be really an approach that we have to do in order to continue our disciple making, our formation program, and our even evangelization program. Uh, one principle, pass. I'll just say this. You have to make people who are with your cell group, they're staying there, make your online meeting like BECs as sweet as possible, as nice as you can, so that it's so so sweet like ice cream they would like to go back to it again and again and that that's a technique that we must all learn that if we have to be the disciples some techniques in online learning that uh, basic as it is which uh, we're saying one you have to be discipler centered i mean you have to be disciple centered as a discipler it cannot be you what you want to sue, I mean, to do and to say, but who are the people with you in that cell group? And you have to now say and do things according to what they need and what they want. And that makes that interesting. And don't make it a monologue. <laughs> make sure that it's a conversation with each other. <laughs> that's, that's the problem with cell grouping, when one dominates the whole thing. And, and it's not, well, I'm just sharing this, that I'm saying that the lady that uh, our sister that asked the question, whether this can be done, it can be done. Because we're doing this in our classes right now. We're doing group the discussion, we're doing lectures, we're doing now all of these animations and things like that. But if I could have time later on, probably share some more principles and experiences with this, uh, with this online formation programs. Anyway, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Jim. Thank you very much, Brother Kajo. You're so sweet. Meron po ba nagtatas ng kamay? Para, okay. Baka po hindi ko natatanaw sa aking marami po tayong natutunan sa hapong ito. Hey, Yes, sino po sila? Oh. Omar po. Sorry po, Om Omar. Omar. Ah, oh, wala kang picture. Omar, yes, Omar. Opo. Please. Ay, sorry. Naka... Ayun po. Uh, may salaobin lang po ako regarding po sa pag-adjust pag, uh, po ng simbahan regarding sa, sa pagpasok sa online. Two points of caution lang po. Uh, Share ko lang po. Um... Na, nabangit po ni Brother Tony, nasasabay tayo sa kabataan. Ang challenge po na nakikita ko is there, are, there is too much competition online at saka saturated with all these contents online. Ang gusto ko lang sana kung magpapasok ang bawat isa sa atin, bawat samahan sa, 
bawat isa sa atin, yung mga samahan, sa pag-online is um, pag susubok na po tayo, sana yung ipoproduce po natin is may quality na yung may it can stand out. Kasi kung mag-release lang po tayo, susubok tayo, uh, feel ko masasaturate o matatabunan lang po yung, yung, yung message natin sa, sa na, nasa labas po na lahat ng yan. So feel ko kung, kung papasok na po tayo sa online, we really have to be prepared as a group or as an individual po. Yun po ang unang point ko. Tapos isang point naman po of caution is na yung personally yung mga ano ko po na, na ano nga po sa social media ngayon pinagbawa nililimit ko na lang po sila sa 2 hours of, of online online so yung yung challenge is pagpapasok rin po tayo sa online eh yun lang na isip ko lang din na nilalayo ko nga yung mga anak ko sa sa online that they have to choose their contents very well. So yun lang po. Nakikita ko yung content po natin may halaga nga para so kung yung ang mga kabataan papasok sa online, we, we give them quality po. Yun lang Thank po. Thank you very much, hmm. Omar. Tama-tama yung iyong uh, comment na talagang kailangan natin ng quality uh, productions ng mga paggagawa na tayo, pagpapasok na tayo. But yung context lang of coming together in order to disciple and help and share, okay, yun hindi naman kailangan kasi yun mukha lang natin ang nandun sa Zoom. Eh. Ang importante yung discussion, yung heart-to-heart -heart talk, yung gentleness, yung being nice. So dalawa yun, yung isa yung growing together as a community okay, and being able to in a way pastor uh, one another, that's one. Pero pagpapasok nga tayo, provide content, dapat talaga quality. Tama-tama yung sinabi mo. Thank monitor. you very much. Thank you very much, Omar. Mo monitor lagi. Thank you. Uh, gusto ko pong i-announce that uh, the Harvest Conference has a series of these presentations that maybe eventually uh, maisishare natin. But for the meantime, they're also available in YouTube. So pwede pupuntahan lang yung Harvest Institute. Makikita nyo na yung mukha ng dalawa nag-share sa atin. Pwede na po nyo ipasa. But um, ito po ay panimula lamang at pagsubok lamang kung talagang kaya nating pasukin ng tama itong bagong environment na ito na dapat naman ay masubukan na dapat naman pasukin natin. So yun po ang ating uh, layunin sa, sa hub nito. It's 3.46 already in, in my time. Okay? At this point, meron po tayong ilang mga ipagdarasal. Okay? Um, alam natin na lumalaganap na naman yung, yung second or third wave COVID lalo na sa Europe. Alam din natin na mayroon tayong mga kapatid na naapektuhan ng pagdating ni Typhoon Rolly sa lalo na sa uh, Bicol at Kat Katanduanes area. So mga bagay na ipagdadasal po natin. Hindi ko po napagsabihan kaagad yung magdadasal pero alam ko na mga kaya niyang magdasal para sa atin. Tatawagin ko po yung aming presidente Si Kuya Roquel, bago ko po siya tawagin para maglid ng panalangin, gusto ko pong i-highlight yung isang uh, quality, that quality of gentleness. Alam niyo po, kaya po isa sa napakaganda ng samahan namin dito sa LICO ay yung aming presidente po ay isa very gentle person. Pag nagbimiting kami, eh, talagang kaya-kaya niya talagang i-lead kami. At the same time, is he knows where to bring the group, his firm. And nakakatuwa pong uh, maglingkod kasama ni Brother Roquel. So, Brother Roquel, uh, may mga ilang panalangin po sana. Baka ba namin mahinga na ilid nyo na kami into some intercessory prayers. Nakamute kay Sir Roquel. Sorry, ayan, magandang hapo po muli. Thank you John for the no, for the kind words no. Uh, at uh, natutuwa po ako na uh, ito pong conversation natin ngayong hapong ito ay siguro nagbukas ng ano ng ating kamalayan para hindi maging sagabal yung ating pinagdadaanan ngayon. Alam ko mga grupo natin sa diocese, sa parishes, sa mga organizations ginagawa na yan. 
Kaya lang, maganda po itong uh, initiative ng Harvest Institute kasi uh, meron po silang programa talaga. At kung ninanais ng isang parokya, ng isang diocese o isang organization na mag-avail ng kanilang services, I'm sure makakatulong po sila sa atin. No? Kaya salamat Jun, salamat po kay Bishop Abilio, salamat kanina kay uh, Archbishop Palma for joining us for the opening. So mananalangin na po tayo at magpapasalamat tayo sa Panginoon. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, once again, we give back all the glory to you. We know, Lord God, that uh, we are not fruitful if you are not with us. No? And so we pray always that uh, your grace may be upon us and this grace so we will cooperate with so that uh, we will be fruitful, not just in our uh, personal life or even in our relationship within the family, but as we relate to one another uh, outside of uh, our own family. And so, pinagdarasal din po namin ang bawat isa na naka-attend dito ngayong hapong ito. Uh, sana uh, maganda kalunsuga namin lahat at um, yung mga pamilya. At lalong-lalong na po yung mga nakaraang ano, typhoon, nakaraang kalam- kalamidad Panginoon, di lang si Typhoon Rolly. At marami po iba na, na kaawawa naman po ang aming mga kapatid sa mga pinamaang areas. Kaya sana hindi lang po kami nananalangin, hindi lang kami nakaawa sa kanila. Ngunit uh, bukas din po ang aming puso at aming palad para makatulong sa mga pangailangan nila. At Panginoon, again, uh, we look forward to our Saturday conversation. Uh, Ilan-ilan na lang po natitira ngayong uh, taong ito. At naniniwala po ako na lalo pa ang pinagtitibay at pinapalakas ng Panginoon ng ating uh, samahan sa sagod ng laiko dahil sa mga conversation na ito. At sana sa susunod na taon, magkabuklod-buklod tayo, magkasama-sama tayo so that uh, we can further the life and mission especially of the Catholic faith. So again, Lord, please bless the rest of the weekend for all of us and may we continue to love and serve you with all our heart. Of glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the yes. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyo Thank you po. Salamat po, Puyo Roquel. At uh, matatapos na po ating uh, hapong ito, ilang panawagan na lang po. Unang-una po ay uh, mayroong tayo pa itong Nobyembre na apat na Sabado, Yung huling Sabado po, November 28, ito po ay magiging recollection. So inaanyayahan po namin na sana ay lahat tayo makasama sa maiksing sama-samang ito or at Advent recollection na pangungunahan po ni Bishop Abilio. Yung pong November 21 naman, ang Sabado bago ng 28, ito po ay parang isang uh, halong reunion at halong sama-sama because tatawagan po natin dito ang ibang mga dioceses na wala pa pong uh, mga diocesan councils of the laity at ipapaliwanag namin sa kanila at sa ating lahat, okay, ano po ba ang layunin ng laiko at ano po ba ang maari pa natin gawin sa nasama-samang pagtugon. Year. We hope that we can find ways to celebrate as one in 20 21. Ang ganda po, ah, celebrate as one in 2021. Ngayon pong ka, 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 14, sa susunod Sabado po, napakarami pong kailangang mapag-usapan, pag-uusapan din po namin ng board kung ano mangyayari. Dahil nga po, um, may mga kaganapan na para sa 2022 elections. Nakausap lang po na min ang Comelec kahapon. So baka po pwede natin uh, bigyan ng update ang mga kasamahan natin para tayo makakatugon. Pangalawa, may concern ang mga dioceses of Virac and Catanduanes. Gusto natin malaman paano tayo makakatulong. Pangatlo, meron pong panawagan ng Diocese of Marbel sa mga nangyayari sa kanila sa pagbibigay ng, ng National Commission for Indigenous People ng Certificate Precondition. Iba't ibang mga issues po yan na i- ipapaalam po namin sa inyo itong linggong ito kung ano po ang ating topic na papag-usapan. For the meantime, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Sa ngalan po ni Bishop Pabilio, 
natin muna kayo bago tayo mag-ending. Opo. Gusto na lang mo makita na makabati kayo. Hindi siya, please. Okay, so, sa halit na magbati, magbigay lang ako ng ilang mga thoughts na nakuha ko dito sa ating uh, conversation ngayon. Now, una po, uh, evangelization means to bring people to the Lord. Uh, may karoon ng relationship ang mga tao sa Panginoon. Hindi natin madadala ang mga tao sa relationship sa Panginoon kung wala tayong relationship sa kanila. No, kaya mahalaga ang relationship sa discipleship. No, kaya if we want to bring people to friendship with Jesus, we have to be friends with, him, with them. Kaya mahalaga yung friendship na yun na magagawa natin. So, tapos, pangalawa po, yung alam nyo, ang buhay kristyano ay buhay. At ang bagay na buhay ay lumalago. Kapag hindi lumalago, nalalanta na yan. Yung tanim ay kailangan mamulaklak, kailangan lumaki, no? kailangan magkaroon ng binhi. Kapag hindi, nalalanta na yan. O kung hindi naman malalanta, yun ay plastic. Kaya ganoon din po yung mga buhay natin, mga pagkagrupo na natin. Kapag hindi po yan lumalago, either plastic yan o yan po ay nalalanta na, namamatay na. Kaya napakahalaga po yung discipleship. It's not just enough that we believe in the Lord. We have to bring that belief to the others, that others also may believe. Kung talagang tunay ang ating pananampalataya. At tungkol naman po sa online, yung uh, nabalita natin, alam nyo, hindi naman kailangan na tayo ang mag-create ng mga malikhaing mga palabas sa online. Pwede naman ang role natin ay tagapasa lang. Napakaraming good materials dyan. Tinala natin at ipasa natin sa ating yung mga kaibigan, i-share lang natin. Hindi lang sana tayo maging amen cloud. Nang <laughs> lahat amen, amen lang. Dapat i-share natin. Kaya ano yung makita natin maganda, i-share natin. Then we, then we become good news. Nagkapagpalaganap tayo ng good news. Kaya kahit na hindi ako marunong mag, uh, magsalita sa online, hindi ako gumawa ng na, na mga informatics, pero nakita ko may maganda siyang uh, palabas, i-share ko sa kaibigan ko. I-share ko sa iba. So, lumalawak, lumalawak po ang big uh, sabihin, ang mabuting balita. So, yan ang gusto kong uh, ibalita sa inyo kasi malaking field ito. Itong online na ito, digital na ito ay malaking field ng trabaho para sa ating lahat. So, salamat po sa ating conversation. Malaking tulong at sana po ay na-inspire tayo na mas mag involved dito. Maraming maraming salamat din sa pagilio. Pinatawan niyo po kami na kapag hindi pala lumalago baka plastic. Okay? Pero sa totoo lang, kumisan, kala natin, pag hindi tayo pumikilos, ay, uh, pakala natin ka-plastican. Pwede pa rin, kahit hindi natin gusto, ay gawin natin yung tama. At ang tawag naman doon, hindi ka-plastican, ka-kristuhan. Yeah. Kahit mahirap gawin, gawin natin. Dahil para yan kay Kristo. Ito po nagtatapos ang ating uh, conversation, Empowered. Okay? Leaders Conversation and we hope that uh, we learn this afternoon hanggang sa susunod pong Sabado, Diyos Mabalos. Yun po ang bati ng mga Tikulano. Salamat po. Thank you po. Bye-bye po. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you po. Bye-bye. Thank you po sa lahat. Thank you, Brother June. Yes, yes po. Maraming, maraming salamat po. <laughs>